Story number two. Are we becoming a scared society or are we already a scared society? This has been coming up quite a few times in little bits where it's always, oh, the pandemic and everybody runs scared, goes by his toilet paper. Oh, this is happening. We're all going to lose our money. And oh, you can't allow this. And you take it back to the seatbelt days. They want to change us in the car seats. And like, now we just seem scared of everything. But the data says we're actually a lot safer, just at least physically safer in terms of crime and things like that. But this came up because, because of Winnie the Pooh, of all things. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure everybody's familiar with Winnie the Pooh, the lovable orange, orange beige bear with a red shirt. A little while ago, and we talked about this, the copyright went out. Copyright lapsed for the character, meaning it fell into the open domain, meaning anybody could start making properties, not, not properties, anybody could start making content or their own proprietary creations based off of this character. So it wasn't on lock, under lock and key anymore. Now you had a little bit of playroom where you could start making your own creations based on this idea of a character, Winnie the Pooh. In short, they made this horribly twisted version of Winnie the Pooh called Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey, which just sounds mm. disgusting anyway. Mm. Apparently, Theo, he got out to some kids. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> uh, yeah. Look, fourth graders in Miami, man, saw this with a substitute teacher. I accidentally put this, look, accidentally is the word, but put this into the VHS recorder, DVD player, whatever they did, and showed it to the kids, and they were basically traumatized. But you just can't go by a title anymore. <laughs> This before you show it to kids. As a parent myself, I'm very weary of all the stuff I see because there's some subtle stuff, even the things that can seem the most innocent. And yeah, man, this was one of those things that, you know, it's an interesting story. And it's funny. This We talked about this story. I feel like we talked about this maybe a year ago. We heard this coming out. People, yeah. it, it blew up the internet. I think people forgot about it. The movie came out. People forgot about the movie. But here it is two years later. We're still talking about this. This is crazy. So. I just see more people trying to pull this type of stunt. Other, if other projects become unregulated or, or what's it called, unprotected, right? With that's in, Yo. the domain, common domain. Who would you want to see in an effed up, twisted, crazy out there kind of way? Do you, do you, I don't know if you have one in mind, but I have. I one. do. I already have one. Oh, oh, what, okay. and they almost went. They wouldn't let this happen, but he was almost in the public domain, but. Disney would not let this happen. Michael D. Mouse, Mickey Mouse, man. If he was out in the streets, boy, we could do some fun stuff with Mickey. He's already out behind the scenes wilding out. If he was <laughs> out here, man, I see Michael D. Mouse running a corporation, slapping women, <laughs> driving his Cadillac. <laughs> yeah. People want to do so much to Mickey, man. It's not even funny, man. So they just, but Disney would not let that happen ever. But yeah. The first. Mouse of Wall Street. Yeah, oh, it just writes itself, doesn't it? <laughs> it just happens that that high pitched voice. Hey, bitch, what's my money? It's just, it's, it's just funny. <laughs> hey, I, so I was thinking Felix the Cat. I oh. want to see some like old gangster type Felix the Cat coming out, scratching fools in the face. Yeah, you like that? You like that? Let me do a dance while we're at it. Bleed, fool, bleed. Let's pivot real quick. I know I want to talk a little bit about the true crime shows. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's the stuff becomes scary. This is stuff that's out there, right? That's actually happened. But our addiction to these shows, man, start with the podcast, right? I don't know if you uh, listened to Serial back in the day, Mr. Benjamin, but that just took over everybody, right? Yeah. I listened to the first season of it, but then became the from the, the podcast to the docu-series, right? Where Netflix has a ton of murder-suicide. Man, it becomes such a thing that Saturday Night Live has a parody. I, I go look at, look for it. It's a song parody about how many of these movies are out there. It's hilarious. Maybe we'll, we'll put the link in there. But my wife is one of those that watches these shows, man. And yeah. she's trying to get me so bad to watch this one called Disappear about these people just disappear and no one knew what happened to them. And I tell my wife, why do I want to watch a show that there's no solution to? <laughs> that's that's such a man response but it is but it's, I, I mean, have the same question suicide this is a person yeah. you know what happened okay there's a murder suicide right yeah 
and we know who did it, right? But then if it's just like open ended, I'm like, my brain is like, now I'm trying to solve it for a problem that's not really my problem. And my brain power is used for that. And it's like, I can use that brain power for something else. So anyway, so that's just my take on these true crime. Hey, I'm not a big fan. I watch them every now and then, but I'm not a big fan. There was an unsolved mystery episode. And it said it happened in like the fo some forest in Georgia and everything. I'm like, huh, all right. I just rode through Georgia one time and that came up. It was like, hey, it's such and such forest is down the way. Or saw, you know, I saw it on one of the highway signs. Like you go that way, you pass through it. And I was like, huh. And it wasn't real to me until I drove past that, that highway sign. And it stuck with me ever since then. I was like, you want to pull over so bad to pull out your bag and get your Man. Sherlock Holmes on. Boy, if you had saw that crime, Mr. Benja. <laughs> yeah, so, something went down in Forsyth County. That was it. Forsyth County, not Forest, but Forsyth County. A uh, bad area in Georgia for black people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so, yeah, these, these shows scared society. And here's, the, here's an interesting twist I want to add to this. What if we're scaring ourselves as a protective measure? Because things are going too far out of control. Technology is moving at crazy speeds. Um, population is really high. What if this is a societal protective measure? To, hey, if we're scared about stuff, we'll pull back a little bit and start to hold on to what we have a little more. We won't be so adventurous and try to, I don't know, we won't lead ourselves into a place that's crazy. Because... I don't want, I don't like using the term healthy fear too much. Maybe we have a healthy fear, healthy skepticism about some things. That's, hey, we're starting to tap into things we don't understand spiritually, technologically, socially with all these crazy things happening. We've never had connections like this and th that we've had with the internet and auto translate and stuff. It's crazy, right? Yeah, I, I, I do feel like people have to distinguish, right, between actual fear and anxious or anxiety right and so i think mm -hmm. we are very anxious society right so yes and that manifests as fear sometimes because real fear is like look that ancestor that bear is chasing us right <laughs> or that we will be killed if we don't leave and that's genuine fear right that's something that that's that survival right, right. instinct that's biological bred into it but what's been happening is because this fear has the biological fear is less and less and anxiety fear has increased more and so I think we just had to distinguish that a lot of this stuff is perceived fear, yeah. just perceived brand, right? This is a per perception. And so how do you combat that? And I think people are doing that with therapy and other ways of interacting because a lot of the, the anxiety we feel is basically feel the other, fear of the other and 99.9% .9 or 99.999% of all human beings are the same. So it's you're fearing something that point oh 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 one percent and really, I think that's what's really driving all this. Yes, and I think there's some technology fears in there too. But ultimately, I do feel like that we have to distinguish between the two. And I think we're just making ourselves more and more anxious. I even see it in my kids. I'm like, wow, my daughter's very just anxious about stuff. And I get it. Just we're overwhelmed with so much information and, and you know stuff that we didn't have to deal with because yeah. information was as freely available. So yeah, well, maybe we'll talk about this more deeply. It is Halloween time. So not to scare you too much. You don't have to be scared about ghosts, goblins, demons. You have real anxious opportunities here in society right now. Yeah. Sending, sen inadvertently sending money to North Korea f for their weapons programs, which is actually a thing that's happening right now. Yeah, you can look into that. But there's companies acting like they're doing one thing and they're actually just taking money and sending it over to North Korea for their weapons. So there are legitimate things to be afraid of. Should you live in like South Korea or something like that? Don't be scared. Don't be scared. You scared, Theo? I ain't never scared. That's right. <laughs> doom, 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 doom. Okay. Anyway, go check it out, guys. <laughs> I ain't never scared.